Here, like an impact tag gets done in house, so we don't outsource anything for anybody. So if anybody says like, "Hey, can you make us like this one of one bracket or whatever?" Like we don't do anything. So this entire warehouse just fulfills impact tech orders. We'll start off with like the machine section over here. Everything we make, whether it be hardware, a piece that goes onto the cage, a bracket, anything, gets made in one of these machines. This is like a motor mount for like the cages, right? So this actually attaches to like the frame of the motor. It's solid steel. What a lot of companies do is they have a bandsaw and they cut them by hand. Cutting them by hand makes them imperfection, right? So we do everything with the lathe, and this is all American steel, so it's not Chinese steel or anything. We buy it from here in the U.S. There's a lot of companies that make it here in the U.S., but they buy materials out, out in seas and stuff. Right. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper, but no, everything gets done here. All of our pucks are CNC to make sure everything's perfect. We have a little pilot hole here. So when you install them, all you have to do is unscrew that 10 millimeter bolt, re-put in another one and you're good to go. This material last year cost us about $3.20 per foot. Right now it's at $16 a foot. And we haven't raised our prices once. This right here makes two pucks and we can sell each of them for $12, but actual cost is like $32. That goes around everything from aluminum to steel and we have not raised our price any time throughout this entire year. So we want to keep it that way, you know? The aluminum stuff, we give it away to the local guys. He comes, he picks it up, and he sells it. Like, we don't charge him anything. That's like, awesome. a lot of the stuff, like, for engraving, things that, like, take up a lot of our time, right. we'll have other people around this area, like, help us since they've been struggling yeah. with the whole COVID. So on the owners, like, he's super big on that. Like, somebody else can do it that's here in the U.S. with, like, U.S. materials. Right. Like, picking it up, engraving, he's like, do it, just send it, you know? like the beginning machines for impact tech so when we first started like making the easy pull clutch lever we had these two machines i think one of them cost us like 10 grand the other one was like fifteen thousand, and we used them for like about a year and uh the owner put all of his money into these two machines and he had no idea how to cnc he had no idea about anything bro it was literally like a, a shot in the dark and now we have all new brand new hot machines like this one's two hundred thousand. the one next to us is wow 300,000, we have a robotic APL, so everything, like right here, these are the rear sets for like the Z125. So this machine's cutting the rear sets, which is like the full pec section of it. Um, and it was just gonna be running on one part every single day. That machine over there, I think it's making the 12 bar for the Grom. You know, taking the plate for the Groms and stuff, everything in-house. The real cool thing too, is like we have two engineers in-house. So when we design a new product, they have degrees from like various um, colleges around the area. They design everything from start to finish. So we don't outsource any of the designs. Everything is designed here in house. And we have our sponsored riders ride each product for about a month or two until like we have like good feedback from them and then we'll release it out. Levers. These are all our CNC adjusters. Everything is done in house. We have all these. And these are super expensive. We can easily buy these from China for like 50, 60 cents but it costs us $7 to make each adjuster, just to keep it here in the US. These are raw levers, all our easy pull clutch levers. Super expensive to make too. We have a whole batch right here. We'll, we'll probably make like anywhere from like 500 to, to 1,000 a day. Yeah, so these are the adjusters for the clutch lever that we're doing. And then right here, we're making our, our slots. Uh, can you give them like a... Having, having these slots here, takes up so much time. It probably adds like three minutes per the machine, which is a lot of time, right? And it puts a lot of stress on our tools, but feel them. Like this is without a slot and this is with the slot and look at the weight difference. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's a big difference, right? Wow. Now that goes to all the other components. So like the perch and the clamp, we also do these little slots to ensure weight differences. So a lot of other companies that have levers, if they're all solid, it's because they don't have the correct machinery to be able to make these and they probably don't care about like way different than this right, stuff, right. you know? And we probably lose like about like eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year making these little slots. Like that we could utilize for other machine time. What is the actual weight here? Yeah, um it's here. like no, it's probably like a maybe like four or five grams. Yeah. Not not crazy, it's, it's, it's but you feel good. it. Yeah, yeah, you it's feel it. I mean you can feel it in your hand. Yeah. Now imagine being able to pull it. Right. You know, like the whole purpose of an easy pull clutch lever is to be able to pull it with little to no resistance. Yeah. So yeah, we, we have to do everything we can. Integrity. 
still remains. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still super strong. strong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we send all of our parts to a company. It's a 3D company outsource, yeah. and they grab our stuff and they put it through the strength test. They see where the weakest points are, right. how, how much pounds of pressure you need to be able to break it, yeah. all this kind of stuff. So we try to maximize everything because if you were to do it a little bit less, then you lose a lot of integrity here. Right. If you were to do it more, right. then you lose integrity here. Right. So it, it, it's not just the design. Actually, they put the science into the thing, man. Yeah, that yeah. We are the only company in the U.S. that use these for some parts. A lot of other companies that use aluminum, they're not this high of a grade, but we continue to use this high of a grade even though it's expensive. They all start off with these long pieces of aluminum bricks. We bring it to this bandsaw, they cut them up, and then for the clip off, for instance, we'll put it in this machine here. This robotic machine will lift up the part, open the door, load it, bring it back, finally cut, and it'll come out something like this. So this is how a clip on afterwards. And you can feel the weight too, so all those bins, like if you just grab them, the weight difference is insane. Again, solid steel, US steel. This amount of steel can probably make like a hundred gauges. Uh, we put them to our plasma cutter, which cuts all of the, the tubing into like specific notches. Come in here, I'll cut these notches. Basically what a notch is, is it's, it's a perfect cut in order to fit another piece of tubing. So if we grab two pieces of tubing here, these notches need to be made. So when it comes together, you have a perfect weld. So this machine notches everything. Back in the day, we used to do everything by hand, but we upgraded our equipment. Um, we have a CNC bender that bends everything, so that's gonna bend the tube into whatever angle we need. Once we, once we have an order for a cage, it's literally as simple as like building Lego. You'll come to these bins, you'll start picking out, oh, this is the mount for a CX6R. Okay, I need two. We need some tubes for, uh, for, for, the, for the top mount, right? For like an adjustable sub cage. We'll grab two of these. We'll literally just grab them, take them to the bench, tack weld everything, and then our robotic welder will weld everything at the end. Wow. So we can make one one cage, a raw cage, in like eight minutes once it's cut up on all these bins. Man, eight it, minutes. Yeah. Eight minutes. This robot can literally weld an entire cage in 45 seconds. You put it on here, it welds everything. Right now, there's not a cage on there. Every single weld on this cage, front and back. The only thing done by a human is it being tack welded. Everything from these motor mounts to this main tube to these support tubes, everything gets cut through a machine, bent through a machine, and a human will never touch it. That way, we ensure it's perfect every time and you never have a fitment issue. You can't finance these, no. which is crazy, bro. Like, everything we have here is like, we, we finance some yeah. of it, you know, but this was one of the things where we had paid in cash and it was like a big hit. It was either like it's gonna work or it's not gonna work. Right. But thankfully we put in the work and it's been such a big game changer. Like ZX6R craft cages, we always have them in stock, they'll never be out of stock. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get another three by the end of the year. Uh, we just, yeah, they just gotta get here from the boats in China because they just take a while and stuff. But this is the only thing that isn't like US made here. The Haas machines are US made. Everything. Everything. The Everything. plasma cutters US made, the benders are US made. We only buy from US companies, but no no US company has a robotic welding arm yet. But when they do, well, we'll buy one from them. I think when we had the R7, we had it done in like six hours. Wow. Yeah. So from it being made, jigged, welded to the first production one in seven hours. That is wow. That is They're all just raw cages. All these cages will be gone tomorrow. They're all gonna go to powder coating and then they'll be back. We get probably like around 100 cages of powder coating a day. Yes, so, you, so you'll probably see the truck here now when it comes back.